Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. For yet another summer, Barcelona have been linked with Antoine Griezmann. Last year, speculation was intense, but in the end he chose to stay, even releasing a documentary to confirm this. But it looks like this might be the window where he finally gets his move. So, in this video we take a look at what he could bring to the club and why they want him, where he would fit in tactically as well as the advantages and disadvantages of signing him. So, let's take a look. But just quickly if you're new around here and would like more football videos like this and many others like in-game analysis and manager profiles, feel free to hit subscribe to join the community. And if you enjoyed the video, a like always goes a long way. Now let's get into it. So first of all, why exactly would Barcelona want to add another forward? Well, put simply, Barcelona's attack has been on the decline for a while, so they need someone to help rectify this. Since 1617, they have steadily been taking less and less shots per game, which means less and less chance of scoring. And this shows in the statistics, and their overall goal scored have gone down from 116 to 99 to 90, and their XG has followed suit. This has also meant more of an attacking burden has fallen on Messi, having to play almost every match. As a result, his goals and assists as a percentage of the team's totals have steadily risen over the last three years, despite his increasing age. So, they need a new forward to help this. So, why exactly has Griezmann been the chosen man? Well, he is a world-class forward, who has been a revelation since his £24 million move from Real Sociedad. So good, in fact, the release clause on his recent contract has quadrupled what Atletico initially paid for him. He has also consistently performed on the highest stage, finishing as top scorer and player of the tournament at Euro 2016 and being nominated for Ballon d'Or as a result, as well as winning the World Cup where he finished as the third best player at the tournament in 2018 and finishing in the top three for the Ballon d'Or in that year as well. So what play style has allowed him to reach these levels? Well, the first thing to note is his tactical versatility. Griezmann has played every attacking position in his career, on both flanks and as the sole striker as well as in a two up front. And he has performed well in all these roles, although noticeably better in some than others. Aside from positional differences, he can vary his playing style. At Atletico, a largely defensive and counter-attacking team, he can drop deep before using his pace and dribbling to hurt the opposition with direct play. At the same time, with France he can drop deep to link up play with the midfield and wings using his creativity to set up goals as well as score them. And Griezmann does what every elite forward should do, score goals. Despite playing in a non-elite side when it comes to attacking, he still performs well and in fact most seasons he outperforms his expected goals, showing great finishing from inside and outside the box. Does this mean he's the right man though? Let's let the stats help us. While this season was a down year for him in terms of goal scoring, but he still managed 15 goals. And his assists and his creativity have been improving with each year. A deeper look at this year's stats shows that he supplies 2 key passes per game in addition to over 3 shots per game. And again, Atletico aren't the most attacking team, so looking at his contribution through percentages may be better. In 1617, he contributed 23% of the goals, rising to 33% in 1718 and 27% this season. How does he compare with the Barcelona forwards though? Well, his goal scoring would place him ahead of Coutinho and Dembele. However, his 15 goals are still significantly lower than Messi's 36 and Suarez's 21. But when looking at his creativity, only Messi would have provided more assists than him, which is a good indication for Griezmann. Lastly, some selected key stats. His shots per game, which is a vital stat for attackers, would have him third, but Coutinho who plays as a wide playmaker is not far behind him, and he only provided more key passes per 90 than Luis Suarez, with the rest being ahead of him. Dribbling wasn't a strong suit of his, and as a result he had the lowest dribbling rate, with just 0.5 dribbles per 90. But Atletico averages 49% possession, whilst Barcelona averages over 60. So how would these stats have looked if Atleti and Barca had similar possession, which would give us a fairer reflection? Well, his 15 goals would have gone up by over 25% to 19, but would still have him below Suarez and Messi, with his assists rising from 9 to 11. His shots per game would have risen from 3.1 to 3.86, which would put him ahead of Suarez crucially. And key passes would have hopped above Coutinho's as well, so more possession would improve him, and this doesn't even account for the higher level of player he would be playing with. But where exactly would he be playing? Barca could have a massive shift to a 4-4-2 diamond or a back 3 to fit him in, but we'll assume that they'll be a bit more cautious. The first option is to stick with the 4-3-3. He could come in for Coutinho on the left-hand side, 
as width is something they have struggled with despite having Dembele. Coutinho would drop to the bench and could rotate on the wing and in midfield. Griezmann could also come in for an aging Suarez down the centre, giving Barca much more movement and aging down the front line. Or Griezmann could be on the right with Messi returning to the false 9 position of old. Failing this, they could use Valverde's 4-4-2, where he would play up top most probably alongside Messi with Coutinho on one side and Dembele on the other. This could then shift to a 4-3-3 when in possession, but this would still lead to a poor balance in midfield. A brave option would be to use a 4-2-3-1, as this is a viable way of fitting more attacking talent in the same 11. With Suarez up top and Coutinho on the left or in behind, and Griezmann could play in any of the positions behind the forwards. But leaving only De Jong and Busquets in midfield would be risky and also leave out Archer. So let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of Griezmann. Well, he would be 4 years younger than Suarez, who is on the decline. But if he signed for his age, 4 years would not be a massive difference, especially as they would have to sacrifice a younger prospect to allow it, and he'll be 29 next year. But Griezmann would reduce dependence on Messi, allowing Messi to be rested for certain matches. When Messi has been rested, the attackers lack creativity and cutting edge, both of which Griezmann could provide. Even when he played, Messi had to create and score, so with Griezmann dropping deep, it would allow Messi to just focus on finishing. But in reality, he and Messi occupy the same positions, which could be a problem. Coaches are usually reluctant to play two of the same player, for example, Dybala and Messi at Argentina, so it's hard to see them both playing and maintaining their effectiveness. Griezmann has struggled to play up top alone, and he usually thrives next to a target man like Giroud for France, or Costa or Morata at Atleti which is something Barca just don't have. That paired with his high transfer fee and bloated wages make this a strange option for Barcelona. It might be better for Barcelona to allow him to go to PSG so they can re-sign Neymar. But if he does sign, I believe his best role will be on the right hand side with Messi returning to the false 9 role. But where do you think he should feature in the starting 11? And is he worth the transfer? Let me know in the comments below. That's all for today and remember, keep it simple.